things were never the same again. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at mods that change the way we play video games. Done. From the birth of the survival genre, the MOBA, the Battle Royale, and beyond, these mods rocked our world. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Gary's Mod, Half-Life 2. This mod is named after the man who invented it, self-taught programmer Gary Newman, who worked as a website programmer while dabbling in game development. It sprung from Valve's source game engine, mainly accessed from Half-Life 2, and was initially released to the public in December of 2004 before being acquired by Valve and given an official release two years later. Gary's Mod is a sandbox quote-unquote game with no set objectives, but at its core, it's a powerful tool with the ability to spawn objects and manipulate them using an incredibly realistic physics system. The reason it's so important is because it allowed gamers to essentially test and hone their development skills without needing too much programming knowledge to do so. And with creativity as the only limit, there have been some astounding creations like a fully 3D version of Ocarina of Time. Skyrim Script Extender, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Skyrim is no stranger to mods, considering it's up there as one of the most modded games ever. And in hindsight, it's hard to imagine the game without a lot of the additions added by the community over the years, things like deeper and more interesting NPCs and the addition of survival elements. However, there are some much larger additions that needed more than just the original code to run, such as the massive Legacy of Dragonborn expansion and the revamped in-game user interface dubbed SkyUI. In these cases, you'll need a mod for a mod aka the Skyrim script extender. Its importance is hard to overstate, considering it took one of the greatest RPGs of all time that already had many cool mods and allowed gamers to experience quality DLC-like expansions made by diehard fans and other unthinkable additions that really brought the Skyrim community together. Day Z mod, Arma 2. Don't move. Hey, 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 come back, come back, come back. Has got a large flag sack? It would be pretty hard to make this list and not include the mod that's basically responsible for the gritty survival genre that we can't get enough of. DayZ is a multiplayer open world survival game that takes place in a post Soviet Russia after the outbreak of a deadly disease starts turning people into zombies. It got an official standalone release on PC in 2018, but the mod itself has been around, officially at least, since 2013, though it was playable slightly earlier than that. It was so incredibly popular that it actually revived sales for the then three-year-old game Arma 2 in 2012, hitting top seller status on Steam and receiving the Mod of the Year award from PC Gamer that same year. Today's plethora of survival titles owe their gratitude to this one. Dude, that's the second time that we've just died without a fight. Desert Combat, Battlefield 1942. Once Counter-Strike became a huge success at the end of 1999 and into the 2000s, it spurred many developers in training to experiment with source codes and create new reimaginings based on their favorite original titles. The Desert Combat mod for Battlefield 1942 was one such creation that transported gamers from the battlefields of Europe during World War II to the modern-day Middle East during the Iraq War. It quickly became one of the most played PC multiplayer games and was one of the very few mods outside of Counter-Strike to actually become as popular as the game it was created from. And it gave gamers an early taste of modern day combat that they would soon come to crave. Modern Warfare and Black Ops, anyone? All in all, Desert Combat earned its praise and was even gifted with best mod of 2003 from File Planet. Team Fortress. Quake. Despite having helped introduce the widely popular concept of online deathmatches in the late 90s, Quake's multiplayer mode was tuned up to 11 with the addition of the Team Fortress mod in 1996. It's really hard to overstate how amazing it was to see Capture the Flag come to life before your very eyes for the first time or how cool it was to be allowed to choose from different classes who all provided unique roles. 
The mod was so popular that the team behind it was hired by Valve to help create a standalone version of the game called Team Fortress Classic for Half-Life in 1999, and work on a Team Fortress 2 began almost immediately, although it was continually delayed until 2007. Yeah, it's crazy to think that one of Valve's most popular titles started off as a Quake mod. Player Unknown's Battle Royale mode, Arma 3. Yeah, I think I got him. I'm just gonna do a couple more shots just to make sure he's definitely dead. It's so crazy that the Arma franchise launched another game changing trend in video games the Battle Royale mode, after it saw such massive success with DayZ and the birth of the survival genre. Inspired by such film franchises as Battle Royale and The Hunger Games, developer Brendan Green pioneered the now famous Last Man Standing mod using Arma 2 and 3 and eventually was able to help develop a standalone version of the game for PUBG Corp in 2017. The idea of desperately searching for randomized gear as the world closes in around you and forces you to kill or be killed essentially set the gaming landscape on fire, and PUBG became one of the most played games of 2018. It's also led to countless spin-offs and recreations, and the mode itself has even worked its way into many mainstream AAA games as well. Safe to say, it's here to stay. <laughs> Defense of the Ancients, Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos. The wolf howl signifies that night has begun. Be wary, my warriors. Like how the DayZ and Battle Royale mods led to the birth of new genres, the Defense of the Ancients mod, or Dota for short, led to the creation of the multiplayer online battle arena genre. Made from the world editor in Reign of Chaos, the Defense of the Ancients mod basically played out how it sounded. It's a team-based scenario where each side must protect their ancient from the other. It quickly became one of the most popular mods of any game ever, and once again, Valve swooped in to pick up its IP in 2009 to make it a standalone title and later released a sequel. No one could foresee its incredible popularity, as it became a favorite in competitive gaming at a time when esports was rising, and the pro scene for Dota 2 is still one of the top draws in the world. Top is missing. Counter Strike Half Life. When we look at the multitude of team-based tactical multiplayer shooters nowadays, it's good to remember that the Counter-Strike mod for Half-Life helped get us to where we are today. As one of the era's most popular multiplayer shooters, Counter-Strike cleverly split players into teams of terrorists and counter-terrorists, thus adding an increased sense of urgency and tension to its scenarios, while also upping the skill necessary to handle its weapons and gear. Also, seeing as it was a 5 on 5, it required strategic play to pick off opposing team members one by one rather than just running around with guns blazing. Its immense popularity led to Valve picking up the IP and turning it into a standalone title and eventually into a series. In fact, it's still popular thanks to Counter-Strike Global Offensive and still has a strong competitive scene after nearly two decades. Multi -kill. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.